Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Inquisitive Brain Podcast. I'm Shaw, your host. This is a show that brings you interviews and insights from all walks of life on the reality of being. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. If you're returning, thank you so much. And if you're new here, I do hope that you return. Today, my guest is Tanya Ho, who's founder and owner of Museflower Retreat and Spa, which is an all-inclusive vegetarian wellness retreat center. And it's based in Chiang Rai, which is in northern Thailand, and offers yoga, meditation, and spa retreats. Tanya also serves as a meditation teacher, and she teaches people how to meditate in a very fun, very easy, and very practical way, and how to trust your intuition. Tanya has studied a number of holistic therapies, including devotional chanting, labyrinth walk, shamanic journeying, flower essences, energy healing, and cacao ceremony. She's very inspired by her life, and she has chosen to help people and to provide a safe and beautiful place at Museflower Retreat so that people can go and rejuvenize and revitalize both mind, body, and soul. I am a huge proponent for holistic therapies And I'm really excited to have her on the show today to talk about meditation and yoga. And yes, a lot of people are, well, I have found that they're really getting a bit more into meditation and yoga. It's been a part of my life for a very long time. And I dipped in and out of it, uh, you know, as, as a lot of things. But I do believe it's always been there. And somehow I found my way back to it through hypnotherapy, which I absolutely love. But meditation is very different. And so we're going to talk about the differences too between different types of meditation and what may resonate with you. Tanya likes to help people to understand that meditation can be easy and fun to follow. And depending on your personal learning style, because some of us are more auditory or visual, some of us may be a bit more tactile. Depending on your personal learning style, there'll be some type or one type of meditation that you will enjoy doing. And we were talking about uh, how she, she was saying that she feels that she's a student of yoga. And I was saying, well, you know, I think we all are because yoga is a practice and it's something you have to continue to do. Tanya also gives a few tips on how to begin, how to even start. We also look at the myths behind meditation, and there are quite a few, actually. So once we got talking about it, there were more and more that came up. There were all these misconceptions about meditation, but it can be easier than you think. So let's welcome Tanya to the show. So Tanya, thank you so much for joining me today. It's really great to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Now, I'm so interested in your work. Um, If anybody's listened to any of the podcasts, they know that I'm a huge champion for meditation, for relaxation, for visualization, and all of that. And I know I mention all that. They're all different. But I really want to ask you, how did you become interested in meditation? Or was it something you grew up with? Mm, Thank you. Actually, so it is not something I grew up with. Um, It's something that I heard like my teacher, like, you know, energy healing teachers, they talk about a lot. And then, you know, my teachers, they always emphasize it's really good to do daily meditation, just like it's really good to do daily exercise or eat more veggies. But it's kind of like, okay, you know, it's kind of like an on and off kind of thing. I don't didn't really pay attention to it so much. I think it was until a few years ago, I think I really decided, okay, let's try it out. Let's commit to a daily meditation practice and see what happens. Just curious, because I'm a person who learns with experience. I just want to like, let's see if that changes my life, like everybody said. And so I think that really began my own meditation journey. And once I started and really kind of get into it, I feel it 
now really become a very important part of my day. So that's kind of like how my journey become with meditation. That's amazing. It really is a practice, isn't it? It's something mm. to practice and do. And you also uh, practice yoga. So how did that come about? Oh, practicing yoga. I'm more like a student of yoga. So I'm not a teacher oh. of yoga, mm -hmm. student of yoga. So I practice more, um, I think, especially during the pandemic, like everybody was doing like at home videos and stuff. So, um, you know, where I run the retreat center, we offer yoga retreats. So we do have yoga teacher here. Um, and then, so for me as a student, I would be also following yoga videos in online and do it in my comfort, my home because I have two young kids as well. So that for me, actually that works really well. And, um, usually even just 10, 15 minutes of yoga just really, really help as well. And so last year, actually, I learned, I did take a course on kids yoga and meditation just for myself to learn more how I can bring that to my own children, um, especially like meditation, how I can introduce that to children more. Excellent. Speaking of which, I know that one of your goals or your missions, uh, you know, really is to help people understand there's different types of meditation. And you sort of I suppose you, your idea is that just find something that works for you. So can mm. you tell us a little bit about uh, the different types of meditation, what might help or what might work for some people? Yeah, so what I discovered along my own journey was you, we typically have this image of meditation when we look at a picture of somebody meditating, holding mudra, and they look very calm as having no thoughts. So when we expect to experience the same thing when we try a meditation and we don't feel that, that's where we kind of give up and say, okay, meditation is not for me. And in my own journey, I discovered, oh, actually there's so many styles of meditation. And it's just like, we all have different learning styles. So some people are more like a visual learner, some people more auditory learner, some people like me is more like a tactile experience learner. And so there are actually different types of meditations that can cater to our learning styles. And um, how I explain it is actually meditation kind of do with our different senses. So there's meditation more focusing on like the sight, for example, with visualization, where right? it's engaging the sense of sight. Um, or with mantra, for example, then you're engaging the sense of sound. So there's actually different, you can say meditations that engage your different senses. And so for, again, each person has a different learning style, each person has a different dominant sense when we're born into the world. And that's very much kind of linked to finding the style of meditation that works for us. That's how I feel anyway, in my own experience. Yes. Oh, I like the way you put that. Um, because you're right, there are different learning styles. And all of us have a prominent one, as you said, a predominant mm. one. Um, but then we use different ones, don't we? So mm. depending on what's happening. Um, yes. Mm, that's right. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, it's like it's good to have a good like toolbox, like different tools, and depending on your state of mind and your mood, you can pull out different tools, different types of meditation. Yeah, that you want to do that day. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, you have starting today actually uh, a meditation that you can learn online. It's a three day meditation course, course as such. So, can you tell us about that? Oh, yeah, it's actually uh, a one week uh, mantra meditation challenge. <laughs> so we started today and we're going to learn one mantra and every day we're going to do like a daily meditation with the mantra. And we have like a Facebook group and everybody can share how their experiences. We also have kind of different kind of journaling prompts just to kind of get into the energies of the mantra. So this week, the mantra is actually all about creativity, communication, insight, intuition. So that is kind of like the topic that we're going to focus on for this week. Excellent. And you can access this through Tanya's website, which the link will be in the show notes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And while you're there, sign up for a newsletter. Um, so... Now, I'm wondering, you know, when people say, oh, it's difficult, I can't meditate, my thoughts and my everything mm. I'm thinking, I can't concentrate, what would be a good tip 
to give to people uh, about mm. the running thoughts through their mind? Yes. So I think the biggest myth of meditation is people thinking I would have no thoughts. And also what you talked about earlier, like practice is the key word here. So it is not about having no thoughts meditation. If we can just take away the expectation and instead of learning how to observe our thoughts. So the thoughts just kind of like come and go, kind of like clouds. And sometimes they come and then we sometimes become too, oh, I'm like too attached and too much thinking on the thought. And don't worry about it. And the point of meditation and practice is to have that moment of like, oh my God, I catch myself thinking a lot, I'm just going to bring my awareness back into my body again, back to the present moment. And that is the practice. That is the main practice. It's not about having no thoughts because that practice of mindfulness is going to translate to off the mat when we're not meditating. And that's an important skill or important benefit, you can say, for meditation. Yes. I think we compare it to, let's say, like yoga or cooking, even cooking. If you see somebody do like a beautiful dish, you'll be like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't think I can do that. It's because we have all these expectations when we see the images of people and we start to compare them. But there's a lot of people, you know, they start with cooking. Maybe they're not really good at cooking or they start with, you know, yoga, just basic poses and you build it up. And same with meditation. So we can't expect when you start with meditation and say, like, okay, I'm going to create I'm going to be completely just in it now. The more we practice, the better we are. And the more we're going to be easier to get into the meditation state, I feel. I don't know if you feel the same in your own practice as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. It, it, as you say, it's the practice. We all have to get there. Um, I'll just quickly say, for me, I it was hypno hypnosis, hypnotherapy, and the focus. Mm. And I realized then that I was meditating. And this was mm. many moons ago, many years ago. And I realized, ah, oh, hang on, there's a link here. There's a connection here. This meditation thing is a little bit like hypnosis, except I'm a bit more aware of everything mm. with meditation. I have to think mm. a bit more. Um, and then now and again, I, what do you think, Tanya? Because I find now and then I'll have this, it's like a void. No, nothing's happening. No, no words. Nothing, and you and it's bliss. It's absolute mm. bliss, and it doesn't last for long, long. But just those few seconds, it's like I've reached it. This is it, and then it's gone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I get what you mean. Yes. So it is. Sometimes for me, it's more like. It is kind of like, because when you're so aware in the present moment, you're just not thinking, you're just not in the headspace anymore. And just kind of that awareness, that sense of being, like you said, and the sense of bliss in that state. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like it is, you know, when we have that moment, it kind of gives us a glimpse. It is possible, you know, it is possible to have that state. I feel like having that moment is going to help to balance out all the other kind of chaotic moments in the rest of the day because we did have that kind of calm time. And then so we know, okay, we can go there again. Absolutely. that, And that's the purpose of the practice, really, I think, to find that nirvana for me. And it's like it's so worth it. You know, mm. it's so worth it. And as you say, it does prepare you for maybe the chaos of the children running down the stairs the minute you open your eyes or even before. So. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. Now, I would like to talk about Muse Flower Retreat and Spa in Thailand. Mm, yeah, so um, Muse Flower Retreat and Spa, I'll just explain what we do first. So we are an all-inclusive vegetarian retreat center based in northern Thailand in the city called Chiang Rai. Not to confuse with Chiang Mai, a lot of people know Chiang Mai, but they don't know Chiang Rai. So we're in Chiang Rai. And we offer yoga retreats, meditation, and also like spa getaway holidays as well. So people can also come for like spa and just enjoy like the wellness classes um so i started the place um 10 years ago and it was actually with my ex-retreat teacher and she was also my ex-business partner 
And it was, I knew her because I attended her retreat in Chiang Mai. It was my first retreat and I was healing the grief from my dad's passing at that time. And the retreat really kind of really inspired me. It's such something so transformational, something so powerful. And uh, so in my mind at that time, when I was involved in the project, it was like I was supporting my expenses partner to help her um, to get this thing going. And then after we opened and we had different opinions of running things, so we split the business and that was in 2014. And to me, it was really then for myself to think about, well, why did I really want to do this at the first place? And to really dig deep for that. And for me, now I would say I wanted the place for city people like me, because I come from Hong Kong, to have a place to reconnect to nature. And through this reconnection nature, I do believe that we can reconnect back to ourselves and not just on the physical level, but on the emotional, mental level, or even spiritual level as well. Um, so that's the reason why it's very much also related to my dad's passing too, because he had depression. So I really wanted to have somewhere that not just focus on the physical healing, but also something for the emotion and the mental health as well. Yes, yes. Isn't it interesting how our own life experiences, especially something like loss, can mm. actually fuel us or motivate or inspire us to incorporate some type of help for both ourselves and for other people. Oh, right. Mm, and your spa is, you know, a good example of that. So yes. is it year round? Is it annual? Is it open all the time? Um, most of the months we are open only in March. Actually, next month we're going to close for two weeks just because there's potential air pollution in the area. Um, but other than that, we are open all year round. Our yoga retreat package or like the spa getaway holiday package is available all year round as well. Excellent. And that's a different website than your own, isn't it? Yes. So that's the musefireretreat.com website. But you can do a retreat for a week and get that similar experience of quiet, calm, um, that mind, body, spirit experience of the spa as well, mm. combined with your meditations and the yoga that you offer, and mm. come back feeling refreshed. Mm. Yes, definitely. <laughs> feedback from your, I mean, what's been some of the feedback? Well, I think the interesting thing is we had people who had to come here and, you know, they just feel really relaxed and recharged. And so when they go back to their daily life, they have this renewed sense of energy. Sometimes, you know, it really depends on the guests, of course, their own intention when they come for the retreat. Do they just want for coming just something for relaxing or maybe they did want something deeper, something more healing for themselves. So I feel like usually during a retreat, sometimes the seeds are kind of being planted and, you know, and then when they go back to their daily lives, there's kind of like small little things they start to take away from the retreat. They're going to incorporate in their daily life or maybe there's something that, you know, they're kind of like really maybe not at the moment, but a few years down, they're kind of like, oh, because I had guests who told me, you know, maybe when they were here, they were completely beginner of yoga. It's the first time trying yoga. And a couple years later, they're doing like regular yoga. It's really, you know, that there's a seed plant that really kind of shifted their life and changed their life. So something has shifted, um, but sometimes maybe not so immediate after the retreat. Sometimes it takes a few you know, I don't know, it depends on each person really, but I feel like definitely kind of seeds are planted and also very much related to the person's own intention by coming for the retreat. That's a very good point, actually, because you, you can go to something like that for eight days or so, and you're not, your life's not going to be, you know, fully healed as such, or parts of it could be. But as you mm. said, you can come away having benefited from all of that and think, oh, well, maybe I need counseling now. Maybe I'll go into counseling or... Maybe now I need to join up to that gym. Maybe now is the time I need to do mm. So, yes, it can inspire you to move forward. Do you think, mm. that's, um, do you think that's a part of the, the breath and incorporating the relaxation, the meditation, and the yoga, and just being away in this beautiful setting, which, I mean, the pictures are 
amazing. Do you think that's a combination of all of that? Yes, I definitely think, I feel like number one for me is actually just being in nature, just because nature itself is so healing. Even if you don't do anything, like if you say, I don't, you know, I'm not going to do yoga, I'm not going to do spa, but just being in nature, I feel like that itself, the presence of nature is so healing already and can be so inspiring. So I feel like just having that reconnection with nature for a lot of people, if they come from the city, a lot of times they don't have that from where they live. Um, and then of course, you know, come all our offerings, I feel like our offerings are more in kind of more nourishing, nurturing type of offerings that we do. So I always like to call it more kind of like a cozy kind of nurturing, gentle environment. Um, like there are places, retreat centers that do fasting detoxes. So we're not like that type. I mean, those, they do great work too. So we do more kind of different. I think our style is just more like gentle and like we have, we also, cause people come here, the food is already included. So you don't have to think about what you're going to eat. Um, it's vegetarian food. So for a lot of people, it's new experiences. And the point for serving vegetarian food is for a new experience. You're breaking away from that daily life habit. We also don't serve coffee and there's also no Wi-Fi or no TV in the room. So you're, breaking away that kind of what I'm used to that autopilot and then sometimes it is kind of breaking away that kind of autopilot that daily life routine that the possibility opens up I know we kind of see wait I actually can survive without caffeine you know and then like <laughs> that has a lot of guys so, oh I actually don't miss meat actually I'm totally fine eating vegetarian food so kind of all these new experiences is kind of kind of glimpse of opening up kind of this new possibilities that's how I feel with retreats too now, you've already mentioned one myth of meditation that people think they'll have no thoughts. What do you think are maybe the other myths? So I think another biggest myth is, again, going to the picture, like sitting down and holding this. So a lot of people think meditation is sitting, counting your breath, which is what I thought when I started meditation. And so I was like, oh, you have to focus on counting your breath. And it's so difficult. Cannot concentrate. Again, that's why I thought I'm just going to fail. It's not going to work. Um, but like I said, because we talk about different style of meditation, but there are also movement meditation. Um, so there's meditations that you can, you know, dance, you move your body. In fact, yoga itself can be a part of meditation because you're moving your body. And afterwards, you have that moment of silence for yourself. Some people describe to me, you know, their run when they go out for a run in a park or a go to swim in the ocean. For them, it's meditation. And that's totally true. It doesn't have to be just sitting inside a room. So there's walking meditation or even just going walks in nature. Um, if they bring a dog or the children, sometimes it's very meditative or sometimes for people cooking is very meditative. Um, or sometimes they do something creative with their own hands, like painting, drawing, even writing can be very meditative. So meditation can actually take in a lot of forms. It doesn't have to be just sit and count your breath which is also very difficult for me too. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the lotus position, the number, the, the pictures are nice and pretty and everything, but yes, you don't have to be in the lotus position. How would you, how would you describe becoming centered? Becoming centered. Well, becoming centered for me, it's kind of just, like we talk about sometimes our mind is just everywhere our hair is being pulled in all directions it's kind of scared i'm thinking about this my on my to-do list and maybe i'm thinking something that happened in the past or i'm thinking oh what i'm gonna do in the future so being centered to me is kind of like okay let's just pull everything just back into the present just bring every back like you know back to really your center for me which is our heart energy center and you can say also for some people like the stomach you know our gut brain just or even our mind just everything we're just kind of bring it back into the body now so we're not thinking of something else but we're just being in the now so to me that's what feeling centered is about and then i'll add actually for me meditation is also very grounding for me personally and grounding for me is just a lot of time again we're so much in the headspace so the feeling of grounding is kind of like this energy is kind of coming down and so i can feel my feet again my feet is connected to the ground and i am again focused in the present moment my mind is not thinking about what's going to happen later or what happened before 
like you, mm -hmm. I started out focusing on the breath, which really helped because obviously the more oxygen you have and the clearer mm -hmm. it becomes and all of that. And before you know it, you're there, wherever you're meant to be. You're calmer. It feels nicer. You're kind of there, whatever that is for you. Um, but any other myths that stand out? I'm, I'm thinking about people who think they need to um, be on their own when they meditate. That's not that's not true. Many people meditate in groups. Mm, yes, that's right. Yeah. In fact, I would recommend if somebody is starting new with meditation, I would say definitely. It's again, same as like you go to the gym, so you're motivating yourself, you go for a cooking class, so you, so you go to a group class, you have that kind of motivation. Um, and for me, group meditations are also very powerful because as a group, when you come to can come together, um, the energy it just, or, you know, the healing effects of meditation just kind of really amplifies. Um, I would say another, not so much myth, but a lot of people would say, I don't have time for meditation. Like I my schedule so busy, I can't fit it in. So perhaps, I mean, I guess there's so many reasons. Perhaps one of the reasons people think is I need to carve out a lot of time to do meditation. Like I need 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and very hard to do that. Um, so to me, I always say start small and very much, you know, we talk about the mindfulness. Even if you don't, let's well, start with one minute. If you do one minute meditation, maybe it's just some breathing before you head out the door. It's still better than none. You still did it. And then if you can do that every day for like seven days, then you're already doing a daily thing for yourself. And to me, meditation, it's very much like self-care. So you're doing it for yourself. You're carving out this time and space for yourself to really have the sacred time and space. Now, sacred can mean different things for different people. Like to me, it's just this reconnect to whatever that is sacred to you in that moment to remember maybe you're not alone right remember you have spiritual support or energetic support or the universe's support depending on what you believe in yes thanks for that and uh when people think that they're going to come out of their body or these are some of the things i've heard through the years that oh i don't want to come out of my body or I don't want anything bad to happen. Um, you know, people become very fearful, I believe, of things that they don't know because it's new, yeah. of the unknown, fear of the unknown. Um, have you ever come out of your body? Hmm. Actually, for me, it's more like I felt an expansion of energy that I have felt. I felt like I was growing so big, so big, so big, like a giant, but obviously I'm not, but it was just the feeling, like I could feel like, oh my God, I'm like growing like a giant, and I almost feel like also there's no time and space, like I'm not in my physical space anymore. So I have experienced that for myself, um, but to me, again, I feel like there are so many meditation techniques. And for beginners, I would definitely recommend start with something that is more grounding because I do feel a lot of us are missing grounding in our daily life anyway. And just like a tree, you need to have deeper roots to be able to grow taller, right? So you, you know, to be more grounded, then you can feel more that expansion or you can say connection. So that's how I see it myself. Yeah, that's, uh, that's wonderful. I, I'm similar. I have to say, I've not come out of my body. So I can do that. But that's not, for me, what meditation is about. It's more of a grounding, mm. a centering. I would say a meditation might help them before they leave the house. Um, mm. Become aware of their own space. I like the way you described the expansion, you know, knowing how much space you take up. And maybe the meditation can sometimes alter that is well, you know you're sat in a chair, you know you're 5'5", five five. you know you weigh 108 pounds or whatever it is. You, that's you, you know what you are. But when you're meditating, things may feel expansive and you mm. know how you take up space, which can be very empowering. So being aware, I think, for me, I find meditation is helpful, just being aware. Um, mm. Yeah. Also, I want to pick up on what you were saying about the heart center, because that's important, too. I think we can all 
maybe work on this. Uh, you talk about the gut as well, um, which is where a lot of anger sits. So I wonder, is there a way, what, what would you say to people, is there a way that they can use the heart, the gut, um, in beginning their meditation? Mm. There's actually, um, it's not my own, I, you probably have heard of have done it, so it's like a calm hold, they call. So you put your left hand on your heart center and you put your right hand on your belly. Some people, this will instantly, usually you feel much calmer. Uh, most people is on the left hand side on the heart, but some people actually feels it's the right hand on the heart and left hand on the belly that feels good to them. So you have to try it on. So you can hold this. And just take a few deep breaths in and out and you can feel your own breath in the belly or maybe it's in the chest and that's okay and just being aware where you are and you can definitely start your day doing that maybe that's already part of the meditation um or that's the beginning of a meditation that you're going to do later i feel like that's definitely a really good connection um to me i feel like the meditations that i resonate with or that land with me is a lot of times just it's always a come back to the heart space so it's not so much on the mind for me or like or the head space but it's more coming back into the heart space into the body so that's for me it's the feeling of being centered and green grounded for me it's having that feeling there in the heart and the belly excellent yes that's what i was getting at that is exactly what i was getting towards because you mentioned it a few moments ago but bringing that back, I believe, can help people, um, especially when they're feeling heartbroken or sad mm. or lonely. Loneliness is an increasing, I believe, like a pandemic, it's growing mm. Mm. longer. And as they live longer, more of their family have passed away. So they're left, people are left alone a lot. Mm. Um, and also feeling maybe out of power as things have taken mm. life. So the way you talk about the heart and maybe bringing your, putting your hand here, your mm. hand belly, and just breathing and then feeling that you're here, you're okay. Mm. And anything you, you may need help with, you've got the power to reach out for it. Um, it's about yes. re restoring your power, I think, and that comes from the heart. So, mm that that's um that'll be a good reminder i think for everyone listening um, mm. back to the home. yes yeah i believe yes. that's how we were why we're here to be yes i just like to remind you all to click that like button wherever you're listening wherever you're watching on youtube leave us a comment it really does help with the algorithm and to push the podcast forward if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or any streaming platform, please do the same. Like the video, share it as well, and leave us a five-star review or any review, whatever you're thinking. Feedback is welcome. Thank you for your support. Tanya, Definitely. what would you say, how can we all become kinder, more considerate, um, more aware of both ourselves and others and more participatory and giving to the world? How can we do that? Mm. That's a very good question. Um, well, first of all, I always, always tell people, bring it back to ourselves first. So all the things that you mentioned, can we do that to ourselves? And meditation is one of, a practice that can help us to be more aware of our thoughts. So once we're more aware of our thoughts, you know, people, we tend to, human being as our nature to tend to think more negative. Our brain is more hardwired to remember the negative things. And a lot of fears in the mind is actually, a, you know, there's a high percentage. I read a study that I can't remember the numbers now. I think more than 80% of our thoughts, like our fears actually never come true. Like, there's just worries, but they actually never come to us. So we're constantly in our head with these thoughts. Meditation allows us to look at these thoughts. And that's where the awareness comes from, that we can see, okay, is there a pattern in certain thoughts? And a lot of times the thoughts are also kind of inner voices, how we talk to ourselves. So what, how do I talk to myself? Can I be more kind to myself? 
can I be more compassionate to myself? Can I give myself more, allow myself to receive more? I think a lot of people, they, you know, when we say we love ourselves, it's really easy to say, but when it comes to action, that's kind of like the part to show, okay, what do I really do that show I love myself? Um, so I think with everything, I would really say begin with just being aware of the way we talk to ourselves. Do we look in the mirror and say, I'm beautiful? Or do we look in the mirror and say, oh my God, look at, you know, like picking out faults that we tell ourselves, look in our body and look and pick out faults. Or do we appreciate ourselves? So start from, I think that is just such a really good exercise. Just look at ourselves in the mirror. What do you tell yourself in the mirror? I like mm. Yeah, the reminder from you to all of us that whatever's going on in your mind, that can help you. If you can tackle those thoughts, they're negative. Now, um, you talked a little bit about your own journey uh, into creating the Muse Flower Retreat. What about your own journey in life? If you had to kind of, up to now, if you had to kind of look at life do you see your steps for being um, orchestrated by yourself or have you been helped along the way? Have there been mentors? Have you been mm. by people or practices or a religion, you know, or a, a spiritual mm. aspect, maybe not religion, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, do believe, um, you know, I believe in the universe. It's always referred to the universe as divine. And uh, there are, you know, along the ways, definitely I feel like the universe is helping me um, through maybe like, you know, letting me know through my intuition, even with teachers that I met. Um, definitely I feel like that's kind of like orchestrated by the universe. Um, and then, you know, just coming with my intuition also. Um, whether it is, I think all teachers we met or not like all people we met are teachers, even though some of them, maybe we have so-called negative experiences and not to dismiss those experiences are negative. Um, you know, that might create a trauma and wounds, but those are also teachers. They're just teachers of the shadow, for example, maybe not teachers of life, but they still teach us something. Um, so definitely, I wouldn't say even creating a muse flower is not just me. I have so much help. Um, my husband, my mom, um, my dad in spirit, I feel like just really a lot of people. And now I have such a wonderful team, like all my staff. I feel like they also help. It's not just me. So, you know, also when I'm my guests, they come here. And one of the things they do mention is always how the staff are really friendly. They really enjoy being taken care of by the staff. So not just me, but definitely all the people around me. I believe in, of course, the spiritual presence of the universe, the universe helping me as well. Coming back to meditation, though, I feel like definitely through meditation, my faith in the universe, you can say, or that relationship with the universe has definitely strengthened. And then when there's challenges, there's still challenges in life. There's still obstacles in life. You know, meditation is something that I can come back to that really helps to bring myself back up again, or at least just to move on with the day when something really, you know, terrible have happened. Just, you know, something just helped me to go through life. So it's the practice of meditation and to me because it's having that time to connect with what is sacred for me. Mm. So reminding myself that I'm not just me here alone on earth. There's a reason why I have all this support um, and just have to trust. <laughs> That's a hard part sometimes is to have to take a leap of faith in the unknown. Like you said, people have a lot of fear of unknown. Me and myself also, right? We always want control. We want to know what's going on. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of things don't happen that way. And like I said, that is kind of having the opportunity then. Or you can see those as invitations to, well, can you trust more then? Can you take the leap of faith? Can you trust your intuition or trust your heart? I've heard people say that their intuition uh, expands through meditation, that they find all of a sudden they're able to feel, sense things Mm. through meditation. Why do you think that may be? Um, Yeah. 
Well, one of the benefits of meditation, it is quieting down the distractions, right? Or you're not thinking the past and the future. And when we start to quiet those things down, the intuition or the inner voice, some people call it like, then you can hear it. So it's basically you're turning down the volume of daily life. And then so then you can hear or you can turn up the volume um, of, you know, however your intuition speaks to you, because I believe our intuition speaks to us again, like with the different senses. Um, so for some people, maybe it's images, some people, maybe it's just sensations. Some people might hear a sound or a song. So everybody's different, but definitely meditation gives that space to like, you know, you're kind of winding down. And then you turn down that volume of daily life so you can hear what needs to be heard. Yes, because that outside noise can really ramp up at times, depending on what's going on in your life. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Brilliant stuff. Well, thank you so much, Tanya. We've learned so much from you. And um, everybody you so has a different, you know, way of thinking about things. And I... I quite like to have people and hear people on the podcast talk about their own experiences because we can all learn from from it. And a lot of people mm. take a lot away from that today. Um, yeah, I think I would definitely as yes, can look at Muse Flowers website. Um, not just, I mean, of course, if you do have a chance, you're thinking of going for a retreat, think of going to Thailand, you can think about us. But also just in our blog, I do write a lot of like meditation tips um like you know also talk about intuition or just kind of other wellness tips so that if that's kind of helpful or if you feel today what i talk about is resonating with you can be helpful you can check out our blog as well and viewers listeners go and follow tanya she's on instagram at muse flower retreat um and you'll find all the links so thank you and thank enjoy you so much again. Nine Peaches Therapy's self-help recordings focus on improving the quality of your life by helping you to achieve confidence, positivity, restful sleep, or relaxation. Created by an expert practitioner to help you to achieve the best result. Improve the quality of your life in just a few minutes a day using the most gentle and effective guided meditations to rid yourself of anxiety, stress, fear, and negative thinking. Available now on Spotify, Apple Music, and other platforms. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment and share the video on your favorite podcast platform. You can also follow on your favorite social media platform. See you soon.